Hey guys, I recently found a really, really cool lock the other day. I've never seen a lock with this type of mechanism before. Uh, the lock is called a like lock, and it's a big, heavy gear shift format. You may have seen these before. The lock itself is around 15 years old, almost there. You'll see it has a manufacturing date of the year 2000. So yeah, this is brand new. I actually took it out of the packaging for this video. Uh, here what the keys look like. You'll notice they're like cards, like little uh, key cards. Um, and we'll go into the details of uh, why it looks like this uh, in another section. I'll just show you how it operates first and then uh, I'll go into the details of the mechanism. All right, so let me show you how this thing works. You can see the card has four rows, one, two, three, four, and uh, those are, that's the bidding there. It's, these, are, these are cuts of different sizes. The keyway is uh, very narrow here to accommodate the card, and this will click into place. It has a really satisfying click as it goes in. It feels really well made, actually. I'm pretty impressed. Turn the key, the shackle will pop up, fully removable shackle. And you can see it's actually double locking. I don't know if you can make it out in there as I turn the key. But yeah, you can see the two locking dogs there. They'll retract when I turn the key. So yeah, you can take the key out there. And you know, this will be mounted on a bracket in your car. And then so you'll just have the shackle somewhere you can store it. And then when you want to lock it, you'll bring it out and you know, push it around your gear shifter, bang, locked, now you can't move it. So yeah, really cool lock, pretty well made. Uh, you'll notice that there's a patent number here, and again, it says 20 years patent, and some numbers, and issued 1996, and then you'll turn it over, and it <laughs> keeps telling you how patented it is. It'll have you know, it says, you know, this is the cylinder's patented. If you try to copy it or any trespass against the patent, it must be gone to law. Here's the number, issue date, some more patent numbers, issue dates. There's, there's so many patent numbers and issue dates. It's like, okay, cool, we get it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the designer must have thought that people were going to copy this. But to be honest with you, I've never seen a mechanism like this before. Uh, and once I show you the the diagrams of what the internals look like, uh, you'll see how unique it actually is. So let me uh, get the pages of the patent to go over that. Okay, so I downloaded the patent here. You can do that for free. You just go to Google the number and you can find it. Uh, the first thing you'll notice here is that the core itself is segmented. There's four discs that are uh, connected, almost like Legos. It's really cool. These these two holes here are for, you know, sticking them together. So theoretically, I suppose you can make the core as long as you wanted. Uh, this one has four. Like I like I said, there's four rows. So each row for a segment. Uh, so if you made it longer, I guess you just have to make your key longer uh, if you wanted. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the mechanics here. Uh, these uh, little pieces on top that are sticking out, this is what blocks the lock from rotating. So you could see those here. They have a spring, right? And as you turn the cylinder, this will block that rotation. For the lock to rotate, these have to be pushed down. So there's that spring, so these have to, pressure has to come down, and then you can turn it. And then, uh, obviously, you might ask, what blocks it from being pushed down? Well, each disc, each segment here, has a faceplate. And so this is that uh, piece that was blocking the that's this right here. So this is part of this faceplate, and within each faceplate, there are these T-shaped cutouts, right? And uh, the pins, or 
they're not really pins, I'd say. They're kind of like wafers. Uh, these are what interact with the key. And these will fit within this faceplate, these T's, uh, these cutouts there. So each uh, pin will have this nub sticking out in, in some different positions. So uh, what happens is the key will slide in here and uh, interact, the cutouts will interact with the wafers and push them back and forth. So each one has a spring and it'll push it back and forth uh, until the nub right here is pushed to a position in which it could fit into this uh, vertical part of the T cut out. So if you were to push this down and that nub was sticking out here and it was like you didn't push it far back enough, it wouldn't, it would block this from being pushed down. So you'd have to push it just a little bit more until it could go, the downward pressure would force that nub into that little recess there. So each, each segment has four pins and there are four segments. That means, uh, that means 16 pins or 16 elements uh, that must be moved to unlock the lock which is which is a lot you know i think look at the keyway on this thing it's really narrow so i think it would be kind of a nightmare to pick this thing uh you know it's not a lot of room to look inside or or, or move the pick back and forth and um yeah i mean maybe theoretically it's pickable but I think it'd be pretty tough. You need some training to do that. I mean, especially if you, you know, didn't have any practice and you walked up to this thing to try to pick it, I think it'd be pretty difficult. Um, but yeah, uh, feel free to download the patent. Uh, maybe I didn't do that good of a job explaining it. Uh, it took me a while actually, it took me like a good 30 minutes to really wrap my head around how it worked. Um, but yeah. I'm really glad I could share this lock with you today. And I have one for my collection and I have a couple more that I'm gonna be putting on eBay. So if you're a lock collector or just lock lover and you wanna to try to get one, uh, I'll have the link in the description so you can go take a look. Okay, thanks.